Now, the latest thing is the Green Deal. And the, the problem that people saw was that um, we were paying out money to get people to insulate their homes, they were saving money. So why don't we get the money back? And also, if we get people to save money by putting in insulation, they've got more money and then go and fly somewhere or do something high carbon. So there's this carbon leakage effect. So the idea of the Green Deal was that you make it effectively free and you capture the savings because that pays for the insulation. Now that's all very well from a theoretical sort of policy wonk perspective. But if you are a customer who's not really interested in insulation, you come along and say, what's the selling point? They say it won't cost you anything. But they don't actually want it in the first place. And so that isn't a selling point at all. You, you've got to have a way of selling something that makes somebody, if you're going to sell it, that makes somebody want it. And now if you're going to sell if you look at how they sell toothpaste, they sell you toothpaste on the basis that your breath won't smell and your teeth won't fall out and they frighten you into thinking if you don't use their product that's what's going to happen and they sell you a car on the basis that it makes you look smarter sexier and all that status stuff and they talk complete crap about what cars do and all that sort of thing it's just lies from start to finish and they offer everything at zero percent interest as well and we don't do any of that for insulation so um, we get misinformation about insulation which is actually unhelpful. We don't get any helpful misinformation about insulation. I'm probably being confused now. <laughs> um, it's actually much easier to sell expensive photovoltaic panels or wall cladding at up to 10 grand a time, even to poor people. Because when you put the wall cladding on, your home looks good and it, it, it feels quieter as well. So that, although it's very expensive, and if you've, if you've got PV panel, you can see it on the roof. It's seen as quite a high status thing to have as well. So, and there's even, in some cases, people have come up with inverters, you know, that convert the DC to the AC in flashy colours that are on display. And you can, you know, when you have your friends around for dinner, you can say, well, I've got the orange inverter with the blue flashing light, you know, that sort of thing. So... <laughs> So that's for the people who've got some money. But actually, when I was involved more heavily in, uh, we were doing a lot of external wall insulation in count, former council estates. What we found was um, we were giving the people who were still council tenants a free external wall cladding. And what we found is the people who bought their own council homes were prepared to pay six grand for it because it made the houses look so much nicer, it made them so much more comfortable and quieter. But now, what about the able, sorry, what about the people who aren't so well? Well, you've clearly got to have grants and uh, subsidies. Now, we used to have a system called CERT, Carbon Emissions Reduction, I can't remember what it's now. They come up with, CERT has been replaced by ECO and variants of it called Macro, Ciro, and Cisco. They're another bunch of acronyms. That's enough to do your head in. And the qualifications get the ECO, which is the new grant. Energy oh, company not. obligation. Thank you very much. The energy company obligation, <laughs> was it? Uh, so when there was CERT, I was involved with the Warm Zone project. And we insulated 51,000 homes and we spent £21 million pounds doing it. And what we found, and we've, I was doing the academic research to follow it up, and I left the project at Leeds you know, University. We found that across, on average, the person who took that up, that's cavity wall and or loft insulation, got a 15% reduction. And that was a, <coughs> that reduction stayed, so it worked. It didn't fritter away. There were some losses due to people. Now, you can say they're losses, but heat their homes a bit more, but some, a lot of times when people heat their homes a bit more, it's because they need to, because they can't use the whole house. So that, that definitely works, but that was free. And we, even when it was free, and we had a three-year selling campaign, 
adverts on all the roundabouts. Sorry, I was looking at them trying to shut the door. Um, and radio station adverts, billboards, yeah. word of mouth. We could still <coughs> give free insulation to about a third of the people. So that shows how difficult it is. And there's a lot of, t there's a lot of, because of all the stuff in the media, people are very wary, rightly so, of somebody coming along and selling them a bit of a dodgy product. You know, they think the cavity wall insulation is going to make the house down. So, Green Deal take up has been very poor. Take up reduced to about 3% from about 95% of the CERT. Uh, and that's the government's own figures. They come up with some, several incentive funds. So, they, they were offering a 6,000 incentive. Then they changed them, that got them a bit of a soundbite. They changed it to 10,000. So, all the marketing for the people to get the 6,000, they said, well, if I can get 10, I'll wait until the 10 comes in. But when they announced the term, they didn't actually say when they were bringing it in, so nobody knew. So we were hanging around waiting to know, and then we knew. And then when the 10,000 came, the money ran out, so then it wasn't available. And then they created another incentive fund without a 6,000 or a 10,000 incentive, and we still didn't know. And then they announced, I think they announced it on the 27th of July or something like that. Three days later, money ran out and closed it. Just like that. So is it any... And the, but, but there are articles <coughs> in the newspapers based on the ministers coming out saying, oh, it's really good, we really want to help, this is a success, it's complete rubbish. So we must give longer term certainty. And the eco, which was a bit more reliable, was changed in the autumn statement by uh, Osborne and Fred. What well. I see working now is that I'm, I'm working with a community interest energy company and we work with councils and housing associations and um, so on. What we do is we find suitable customers who we think we could do the work for with what we think the grants and what's going to stack up. Then we put them on database so, and then, so we're ready to roll. So as soon as the finance comes out, we can use it rather than scrabbling around looking for customers. So that smooths the funding troughs. Um, at the moment, there are only six month duration funds available because the market is very unstable and none of the big energy companies are prepared to release long term funding. So that's another thing. We're doing things like connecting park homes, that's mobile homes, to mains gas, or we're trying to do some combined heat and power for them because they're very poorly insulated um, and also they need some structural improvement as well. And right now we can still do larger homes for free with cavity loft insulation because the funding works and we've got funding for that. So that's possible right now. But you do need to get area based uh, initiatives together and you need to look at the funding is somewhat geographically based and these things like this Cisco and CIRO, these are acronyms for things and the Cisco Rural and Cisco Not Rural. So you have to draw lots of maps to work out who's eligible for what and if you're a bit poor or a bit older you get certain things so you have to work all that out um, and what we try and do is cross subsidise when we get say a hundred homes together from the people who can pay or the people who get more grants subsidise the people who get less so we try and smooth it out but in terms of what we should be getting on what I think would make a big change um, we need stronger energy regulation. For example, purchase and sale. At the moment, people have to have an EPC, but it doesn't have very much impact. In the rented sector, I think the regulations are, because now you can't rent a property unless you bring it up to a certain standard rating. Also, you can't get the feed-in tariff for the photovoltaics unless your house is up to a certain level or you get a lower tariff. And I think those sorts of regulation issues, it's like saying your house isn't fit to live in unless you upgrade it to a certain level. A bit like you often have to put more ventilation under the floor or you have to rewire. Well, you should have to do the same for insulation. Yeah, the main thing, I think we need a government that actually gets this issue, and I'm afraid we don't. We don't. And I would just say, I think it's my final thing, a bit like the other speakers were saying, we should be spending 
billions, hundreds of billions on big infrastructure projects which could generate energy, create jobs. We can create whole new industries out of the carbon we could capture. There's such an opportunity there. And I guess the only reason they're not doing it is because this government and the previous government don't have friends in the sectors we're interested in. I'm sorry, but I, I do think it, it comes down to that. So we've got the job on and off. We've got the job on and off now. So I think